Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be going over my top 25 running back rankings for week 12 of the fantasy football season. And lucky for everybody, there is no teams on by this week, so everybody should be available. And if maybe your flex player, your third running back is not on this list, have no fear. They might still have a good game. There's just a lot of names to get through, and we got to limit it down to the top 25. So we're going to start it off nice and easy here. Austin Eckler, not really much to say. PPR God, especially in PPR leagues. I mean, this guy gets like 10 targets out of the backfield every single game. He's going to be going up against the Arizona Cardinals. Not the best matchup in the world, but it's Austin Eckler. You can't be worried about that guy. Coming in at number two, we have Derrick Henry going against the Cincinnati Bengals. We saw Najee Harris have a great game against Cincinnati last week. I expect more of the same from King Henry. Man's an absolute beast he's gonna run right over that whole team dropping down a tier here we have saquon barkley in a tough matchup against the dallas cowboys now saquon is coming off a rough game i believe he had about five fantasy points in ppr leagues which is nothing like saquon like you think of saquon you're thinking 20 fantasy points when he's fully healthy so he dropped a dud last week does he bounce back against a very tough defense we'll have to see i'm still starting him in every single league that i own him in obviously He's an elite running back, but that's why he's in A and not S tier this week. Coming in at number four, we have Josh Jacobs against the Seattle Seahawks. Now, Jacobs is seeing so much work in the passing game because, you know, Derek Carr is just dropping it off to him. He's also getting like 20 to 25 carries every single game. He's the only running back last week that actually got snaps. So what does that tell you? He's going to be using the offense a lot. I did make a video recently about Josh Jacobs in the fantasy playoffs saying that I did not like his schedule. That is still true. I still think that you should dish Jacobs off earlier rather than later. But I mean, he's getting insane usage right now. So we really can't complain. And we got him ranked at number four this week. Coming in at number five, Christian McCaffrey against the New Orleans Saints. Now, McCaffrey is still a very solid running back. Don't get it twisted. He would be an S tier, but they seem to be using Elijah Mitchell a lot more than expected when McCaffrey got traded to this team, which is all right. I think they're saving him for the playoffs for a big playoff run. They want to keep him healthy. It's understandable. But for fantasy purposes, you got to lower expectations just a little if both running backs are getting, you know, 10 rushing attempts per game. So that's why he is in A tier and not S. Next up, dropping down a tier is the guy that is definitely not getting enough respect recently. Ramondre Stevenson going up against the Minnesota Vikings in a great matchup. You just saw Dallas run all over this defense. Kirk Cousins in prime time. I expect them to struggle on offense. You know, that's what normally happens against the number one defense in New England. Should be a great situation for Ramondre Stevenson. I would not mind playing him whatsoever. You're you're having him in your lineup. I mean, that's why he's ranked in B for me. Coming in at number seven here, K9. Kenneth Walker against the Las Vegas Raiders. Easy run defense to go against. Kenneth Walker is an absolute animal. And I've been saying it for a couple videos now. This is the last time I'll say it. All right, I promise but he had a very bad game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the ground made up for it which we love to see in PPR leagues with the passing game he had six catches 55 yards I mean what more can you want from a guy if he's struggling on the ground you want him to get passes and he did exactly that so I'm very confident about K9 for the rest of the season and especially in this matchup against the Raiders coming in at number eight here we have Nick Chubb going against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and this is not an easy matchup by any means, but you got to love and respect Nick Chubb as a runner. Not the greatest PPR fantasy player in the world, but he'll still run circles around defenses. This is supposed to be a sloppy game, bad weather. So I expect a lot of running and I'm confident in Nick Chubb this week against the Buccaneers. Coming in at number nine here and rounding off B tier is going to be Jonathan Taylor. And everybody's just going crazy about Jonathan Taylor's performance against the Eagles. I don't think it was really that impressive. I think he had 22 carries for like 84 yards yards which is like you're getting 22 carries i expect over 100 yards against a philly defense philly run defense that's not the best in the world so he's got another pretty easy matchup here against pittsburgh that just gave up a ton of yards to samaji p ryan and joe mixon last week it's a good matchup you know i gotta rank him in b tier but i'm not totally sold on him yet for the rest of the season i gotta see what this colt o-line can do against 
a better defense in the upcoming weeks but for as of right now he's gonna sit in b tier coming at number 10 we have travis etn not the best matchup going up against the baltimore ravens but etn is that back where he's gonna get like 20 to 25 carries if this game is close also i expect him to be involved in the passing game a bit more as the season goes on so far he's been sitting around two to three targets which is not ideal you want to you know the main star of the backfield and the team basically to be getting more targets out of the backfield so we'll look for that in future weeks but as of right now number 10 is a solid spot for etn coming at number 11 i think this could be a real make or break matchup for aaron jones against philadelphia eagles defense that has been struggling to stop the run you saw against jonathan taylor I mean, he did have a lot of attempts. It wasn't the worst game on the ground for the Eagles defense, but it wasn't great either. Aaron Jones is an explosive back. I think he can break one loose in this game, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if he finds the end zone against the Eagles. So number 11 is a good spot for him, in my opinion. Coming in at number 12 here, we have James Conner going against the Los Angeles Chargers. I've been telling you guys to buy in to James Conner for a while now. It's because they got rid of Eno Benjamin. The only real back giving him any competition whatsoever is Keontae Ingram. And it's not even real competition. Let's be, let's be honest. It's like a clear number one, number two situation in Arizona. He's got an easy matchup this week. We saw what Isaiah Pacheco did against this Los Angeles Chargers defense on Sunday night. Absolutely tore him up. I expect James Conner to have a great fantasy day. Coming in at number 13 and it's here lower, Jeff Wilson Jr., another guy that I've been telling you, buy into this guy. I think he's gonna be the lead back here and I actually don't have Raheem Mostert ranked on this list, but Jeff Wilson should see around 18 carries if this team is winning maybe perhaps finds the end zone against the houston defense that will be on the field for the majority of the game i would expect because miami just puts up points on points on points but if they get up early you'd like to see what jeff wilson has to offer in this matchup coming in at number 14 we have latavius murray against the carolina panthers you guys saw what joe mixon did to this defense five touchdowns a couple of weeks ago against a struggling panthers defense latavius murray is really the primary back now that melvin gordon got waived from denver i'd be very confident having latavius murray in my lineup this week and he's actually not bad in ppr either he gets like three to four catches per game so you're loving what you're seeing out of him very high potential for the rest of the season i believe for him coming at number 15 we need a bounce back game from this guy damian pierce against the miami dolphins i said it in uh the recent video where you know we were talking about people to panic on i'm not fully panicking on damian pierce just yet if he has a bad game right here against miami i'm hitting the panic button on him but as of right now i think he has a bounce back game i think he does pretty good here you know they might be down big in this game but miami's run defense isn't the best in the world also not the worst it's kind of mediocre it's 15th right in the middle right in the middle so we'll see what damian pierce can do i think he's gonna he's gonna have a bounce back game here coming in at number 16 here and actually this whole tier is just people with bad matchups that's why they're ranked this low you're probably surprised that dalvin cook fell this low against the new england patriots but i'm um, like i said in my wide receiver video bill belichick just knows how to stop key players justin jefferson and dalvin cook on this team will be contained in this game if i had to take a guess so that's why he's down this low don't love the matchup at all dalvin cook a great player kirk cousins in prime time though not a great player so that's why he's down this low coming in at number 17 here we have alvin Kamara, another guy that's been super inconsistent i'm not gonna lie other than his 40 point game since that we haven't been seeing much action out of him which is not good andy dalton you know not the best quarterback in the world for the saints even though they're winning games so they're not gonna go away from him but a tough matchup here against san fran hopefully they dumped the ball off to Kamara a lot. That's what you're looking for is the pass catching ability from this guy. But we'll have to see what happens. Have to see what the game script, you know, has in store for Kamara in week 12. Coming in at number 18 here, we have Najee Harris, a guy that I think is going to have a great rest of the year, but he has a tough matchup against the Indianapolis Colts. And this Colts defense is sneakily good. They're just on the field a lot, so it makes them look a lot worse than they actually are. They contained Miles Sanders to five points last week, even though you can't compare running backs like Najee Harris to Miles Sanders. They're not even in the same realm. Still don't think Najee's gonna have a great week here. Coming in at number 19, a guy that absolutely keeps going off week after week, but I can't be confident in him 
with Zeke here breathing down his neck, like Tony Pollard against the New York Giants. And Zeke is not even going to be ranked on this list. I can't lie to you. Two one yard touchdowns for Zeke. Like that's not going to happen every week. And this is a tougher matchup than they saw against the Vikings. I think Tony Pollard comes back down to earth, maybe 15 fantasy points, like which is still really good, especially for a, a backup backup running back on this team he should definitely be the starter i don't know what they're doing there but that's why he's ranked at number 19 coming in at number 20 here and down another tier is definitely a guy you should still be buying into if you can antonio gibson against the atlanta falcons gibson actually out carried brian robinson this starting job in the commander's backfield has been flip-flopping for i don't know how many weeks now one week it's gibson getting more carries one week it's brian robinson getting carries but Brian Robinson does not have any pass catching upside as to where Gibson keeps getting consistent catches out of the backfield and keeps performing in PPR fantasy league. So I am confident about it. And this is a good matchup for him. Coming in at number 21 is David Montgomery in not so good of a matchup against the New York Jets. Jets defense has been solid all year long. I think if Justin Fields is out because he has a shoulder injury, then they stack the box against David Montgomery. He has an awful day here. But that's just my opinion. He will get a workhorse role still these next upcoming weeks because Khalil Herbert is on IR. So I'm feeling good about him going forward, just not so much in this matchup. Coming in at number 22 in that same matchup is going to be Michael Carter against the Chicago Bears. Now, I am not confident at all starting Michael Carter when Zach Wilson is at quarterback. But if Zach Wilson gets benched this week and does not play, I would plug in Michael Carter because I think he's going to have a good game, bounce back game. He dropped a fat dud last week. Fat dud. It was absolutely disgusting. Anybody who played him, I'm so sorry because that offense looked like crap the entire game. And I do think it's Zach Wilson's fault. He's not even taking accountability for it. I think they should bench him, let Joe Flacco take a hurl at it. I think Michael Carter does better as time goes on if they change the QB out. Dropping down another tier here, we have Jamal Williams going against the Buffalo Bills. This is surprisingly a good matchup for the Lions running backs because the Bills are not great on the ground. I mean, they're 10th they're in the league, not great, not terrible, like kind of middle of the road. But Jamal Williams just is, has a knack for finding the end zone. Three touchdowns last week, which in PPR leagues was not the best game ever, surprisingly. He only had like 24 fantasy points. I'm saying only 24 fantasy points, but three touchdowns, you expect like a 30, 35 point day out of him but he wasn't really catching any passes out of the backfield. I think it's still the better option to play Jamal Williams over DeAndre Swift for now until we see some consistency out of Swift. So I'm liking Jamal Williams in this matchup. At number 24, this one might be a shocker and you might flame me for this one. I'm not putting Lenny Fournette in here. Rashad White against the Cleveland Browns. This is supposed to be a sloppy game, like I said earlier. And I think Rashad White could break out here and have a good game if they give him enough playing time, which I think they will. So I mean, debate me if you want in the comments section down below. Some people in the past videos have been vouching for Lenny others say he's total trash let me know in the comment section below uh and last but not least at number 25 we have Miles Sanders against the Green Bay Packers I've been telling you guys to sell Miles Sanders for a while now this guy is just not catching passes out of the backfield had to put him here for the potential that you know Philly leads in this game and he gets a lot of rushing attempts but in PPR leagues, especially try to get rid of Miles Sanders as soon as you can. Not the best matchup in the world, but we'll see what happens. And I want to give a little bit of an honorable mention to Zeke, of course, because he, you know, scored those two touchdowns last week. And another guy that I think will be a sneaky play this week, Kyron Williams. All right, Daryl Henderson just got cut from the Rams, which means the only running back there are Cam Akers and Kyron Williams. I think Kyron Williams is going to be the guy and they're playing the Chiefs, so... They might be down early, which means Kyron Williams is going to get more playing time. He's the better pass catching back than Cam Akers. I want to see what he can do. Let me know if you guys are starting any of these people, which you probably are. And if any of this advice helped you out, please drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I will catch you in the next one, guys. Peace.